Hey everyone, welcome to The Creator Show. I am super excited. My name is Ruben Drieger. If you don't know me, I'm excited to actually, we're having a guest on today and we're going to be getting tactical. And you guys, I know you guys have listened to a lot of the podcasts. I've literally had episodes and episodes on systems and tactics and all that stuff, but I'm bringing on a guest who actually knows tactics really well. He knows exactly kind of our systems because he's, he's worked with us in the past and I'm really, really excited to bring him on. So John, why don't you give yourself kind of like the one to two minute introduction so people kind of get to know who you are and then we're going to dive in and we're going to get down and dirty with how like actionable we're going to be getting today. Yeah, sounds good. Thanks for having me. So uh, first and foremost, my name is John Mango. I'm an online fitness coach at the moment. That's what I do full time. Uh, I've been in the fitness industry for quite a while. I always had a passion for fitness. That's kind of I was never a good student when I was younger, simply because I didn't like academics, uh, that kind of stuff, right? Um, and I never really lived up to my potential when I was younger. And I think all my peers could see that in me. And so fitness was sort of that out for me. And uh, I really, you know, ever since I was 14, I started getting into it and it really dragged me through some tough times in my life. And so I decided, you know, what better route to pursue than this? And, and you know, the change that fitness has created in my life and eventually led me down the path of being a coach and helping thousands of people and building a business and this type of stuff. Uh, you know, I figured I want to share this passion and help the world experience the same sort of benefits in their lives. So I love that. Yeah. That's, love that a lot. that's what I pretty much have dedicated my life to. Okay, sweet. And I'm, I'm excited about getting into the tactics of it all, but before we do, like, I really want to talk about, um, maybe some of those hard things that fitness helped you get through because part of, part of this show, the reason that's called the creator show is because I want people to understand that they can create in their life what they want in their life. Mm -hmm. And uh, before we get into tactics for business, let's talk about how fitness was maybe a tactic or a strategy to help you through hard times or to become a certain person or to change who you were. So let's dive into that a little bit because I think that that is going to be helpful for a lot of people to know as well because not only do we want to grow our businesses, but we also want to just grow ourselves. So dive into that piece a little bit and we'll kind of, we'll kind of ebb and flow in there a bit. Yeah, sounds good. I mean, my philosophy has really turned into, regardless of what you want to accomplish in your life, whether it's grow a massive business or, you know, any endeavor, you want the best family life you can have or, you know, whatever it may be. Uh, my personal philosophy is that by achieving your peak optimal fitness, yeah. you can then have all the tools, at least mentally speaking, necessary to get there. So for example, fitness for me, I always used to quit things in my life, right? I, I would never give things enough time to sort of see the fruits of the labor that I was putting in up front eventually. And so fitness was one of those things that taught me the importance of sticking to something and, you know, not, there's going to be a ton of obstacles, not giving into those or working around them. Uh, and really just that whole determination aspect and the mm. grit, the grit that's required to achieve fitness because uh, it is ultimately a lifelong thing, as is any endeavor worth pursuing, in my opinion, then that sort of translates from a grit perspective and uh, just mental fortitude and persistence, really. Yeah. Okay. I love that. I love that. And I think that's really important because, I mean, I know you and I have talked a lot about how like similar certain things, whether it's principles or comparables for fitness to business are, and we're, we'll dive into that a little bit later. And so what, what would you say was, I mean, you, you talked about how you, I and mean, you actually really relate to the whole like starting and stopping things a lot or, or just bouncing around a lot. I got taught, I got told a lot when I was younger that Ruben, like you, you just need to stick to things like you're, you're way too sporadic. Mm -hmm. And um, I, I didn't actually see it as that bad of a thing, but talk about how, um, how do you have, basically, how do you go from jumping around a lot to sticking with something like what actually helped you finally stick with it because that's whatever that glue was it helped you create a certain lifestyle and i want i want to share what was that thing discipline commitment what was it habit that allowed you to actually stick with it to create that lifestyle well i guess uh one of the main things would be understanding it's it's two parts i guess i could break it down into one is understanding why 
it was important for me to do this for myself, right. my life. So like, why did I want to get fit? Why was I working out so much? What is this really going to help me with uh, right. in terms of more than just fitness? And then the, the second part is understanding that, you know, it is commitment. So when you're doing something sort of on and off or not putting all your energy into it, you're not yeah. going, to, you're not really committed. And when you're not really committed to something, you don't see the, you're never really satisfied with the results, right? There's always something kind of left there that you feel like deep down, you know, you could get more out of it or, you know, yeah. you could be harder. And then there's sort of a sense of unfulfillment from, you know, working at below your potential like that. And so I realized by committing and putting a lot more focus into one thing, yeah. instead of, you know, it's kind of like the whole jack of all trades, I guess, instead of putting a little bit of energy into multiple things, the second I started kind of, you know, focusing my energy into one, putting 80 or 90%, yeah. my results were exponential. And right. in turn, I was a lot more fulfilled because of that. Right. Okay. Totally. No, that makes sense. And I think, I think that's really helpful in basically, I mean, it's, it's kind of, it's kind of the principle of what you focus on grows. Right. And if you're focusing on, there's like, there's like this little graph that um, I often see online where it's like, if you're focusing on like eight different things, like you're being pulled and you're, you're only going like X amount of distance with them. But if you focus on one thing and you put all your energy towards it, you go much further and you're actually going in a direction that you want to go. So it's kind of, it's kind of that same principle of like, Hey, if you want to create something in your life, you're going to have to put a certain amount of soul focus on it. It doesn't mean like everything else in your life goes away, but if you want to achieve something, there is a certain amount of focus that has to go towards it for a certain amount of time. It's just, it's just how it works. Right. So no, I like that. I like that a lot. So let's, let's talk about, so your first couple of years as a fitness coach. And the reason I want to talk about these is because I know a lot of people listening to this are people who are making less than six figures, making maybe not even a full-time or part-time income. They're just starting potentially. And I want to go through a little bit of what are some of the myths or what are some of the things that you did at first that they actually, you now know, weren't the right things to do. Kind of, I basically want to create a bit of a roadmap helping people not do the things that you or I did at the beginning where we failed. Um, and I just want to give people a bit of like that clear path. So yeah, talk about your first bets and maybe we can dive into on some certain topics. Sure. So I've been in the online coaching, fitness coaching space for just about three years now. And um, the first couple of years, it was something I was doing a little bit more on the side, right? A side hustle, right. they say these days. Uh, and full time, my you know, what I was focusing on was really in-person training and, and coaching at a studio. Uh, and so obviously based off what we just discussed in terms of fitness, my focus yeah. wasn't really on the online thing. So it was there, it was cool for a little bit of extra cash every once in a while. Uh, right. but again, just like with the fitness, I realized, okay, well, one, there's a lot more opportunity in this online thing. And not only opportunity for growth and, and creating a cool business, but mostly opportunity to help more people. And right. so what, what's the natural thing that I realized through fitness? Well, if I want to grow this, I have to put a lot more attention and energy into it. And so that's what I did. However, similar to fitness, I love that analogy. No matter how hard you work, it's not only, always about working harder and harder, which is what I did at first. For yeah. basically the first two years, as you know, um, I was just working myself into the ground, basically, for mm -hmm. much less results than what I'm seeing now. And uh, there's definitely a few very key things that are the reason why. So uh, did you want me to get into some of those things right now? Get into them. Yeah, let's go. Let's go straight in. Cool. So, I mean, the very first and foremost tactical thing was tracking, okay? <laughs> and like, honestly, straight up, I, I tell all my clients as a fitness coach, look, if you're not tracking, you're not 100% committed. And that's because what gets measured gets managed, what gets managed get mul gets multiplied, right? Yeah. Uh, I was basically tracking nothing in my fitness business right. for the first two years. I would track my income like every month. For and sure. Right. And naturally, but that included all my other stuff. I don't know how much was coming from the business. I was coming from here and there and the other. And, and it was very much up and down, up and down, 
you know, to no surprise. And so that's the number one thing. Like, I know you're big on tracking. Like, would you yeah. say that's probably the biggest thing in your opinion? Or what do you think about that? So, so, so here's how I think about it. There's a lot of hustlers out there. I would say, John, that like you're a hustler. I'm a hustler. Like we, we like to work hard. Yeah. But what happens is when, when you work hard, void of tracking, you actually can get pretty good results. Like you can, you can do decent. It's kind of like the guy in the gym who he works out hard and like he does, like he does really hard. He can get decent results, right? Like you can build, I mean, I know, I know for instance, like before you tracked a lot, you had some pretty good months where you would make six or $8,000, but then the next month it would come down. Right. And that's, that's the problem with when you put out so much work and so much, you, so basically let's say you put out 10, whatever, 10, we're going to quantify 10 pieces of workout, okay. but you don't know which pieces of that work contributed to the outcome. Right. And so we, we see a lot of people who are doing a lot of hard work when they come to us, just like yourself, we kind of X out a lot of the fluff. We narrow in on just a couple of the pieces that actually, we call them like needle movers, right? Things that actually move the needle in business. Yes. And that's what actually causes the growth. It's not because we teach people how to work harder. It's we teach them to work hard on the right things, or you can call it work smarter, but you're, we're still working hard. We're still, we're still hustling. And so now, and you can be as like, uh, you can share anything you want on here. Like this isn't like something where you like, you're like, Oh, don't share Ruben secrets. Like you can share anything you want, but what specific things would you say that basically tracking has helped you the most, which specific metrics, um, which things that like you, you input on a daily weekly basis have made the biggest difference for you. So, uh, it's a good question. I would say that, you know, getting as specific as possible, it would have to do with, tracking every single conversation like right meaning message uh every message every dm every single time i'm communicating with someone until we get up to a sales call obviously yeah. i'm tracking you know what happens on the sales call what you know what the outcome is and so on right. that i feel like more of a given but what wasn't a, so obvious for me that just blew things up in, in a good way is the tracking every conversation whether you know whether how it came in how it was created where it's going why it's going there and how yeah. it's, you know basically quantifying all the conversations um I, I find it very similar to almost weighing out every gram of food when you do that yeah. it's really just it's giving you no room to to miss anything right 100 percent, right. and that's and i know we had that conversation where i was like yeah. John, you need to stop intuitive eating in your business yes. metrics. You yes. need to start like looking at the micronutrients. You have to start looking at like, I, I think I made the comparable to like rest times in the gym or like making like sure like you, you know, like your time under tension, like all those things that are just maybe more advanced or whatever it is. And, and it's really, and this, this is where it's at because I know for a fact, I remember the month when I was an online fitness coach and I've been getting sporadic results and not even that great results. It was like one month to be 4k, the next month to be 1k. Like I was just kind of like in that yo-yo. And I remember the month where I was just like, Hey, I am fed up with inconsistent results. I had hired a couple of business coaches. They'd given me obviously some tactics and strategies for, I was getting results. So it's not like I, like I was mad at them for not getting results. It was just sporadic and I, I didn't know how to make it consistent. So I remember I, I got out my whiteboard and um, basically I'll, I'll draw this out here on a piece of paper. I just like, I drew like an Excel sheet, right? An Excel sheet for those watching the YouTube. So it was basically like this. And it's it basically, I think it was like seven or eight different areas. Um, basically this is, this was like the, the prehistoric version of the track right now, giving you guys as clients. Yeah. Um, and I remember just writing in there, I was like content, messaging people, like ask for calls. Like I started just tracking these different things. And I remember it was, it was a November about four and a half years ago. Um, and I remember that was the first month I made over $8,000. And it was because every single day I came in, I knew what I was supposed to hit and I did it. And that like, be, be, because, and I actually just made a post before we got on here and I was talking about how 
every business guru, they, they say that their secret is the one secret that works, right? They're like, Instagram's the best, Facebook's the best, LinkedIn's the best, email's the best, paid advertising's the best. Like, they, 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 they're always like, this is the best, this is the best, this is the best. It's like, you know what? They all freaking work as long as you put the right metrics through them. They actually all work. That's why, I mean, that's why there's people who say that they all work because they do work. And yeah. um, that's something I, I want to, I always want to just shout from the rooftops, guys, is like, be educated. Don't just like be like, oh, they say that this is the best, so that works the best. No, it's more universal principles like tracking. Mm -hmm. So anyways, I'm going to, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, to, I was like, I was on a rant there. Right, right, totally. But um, so actually talk to people because I know you've, you've obviously been working with us and are working with us right now. Yes. Tell people a little bit about the tangible results you've gotten from tracking. Because I don't want to just be like, tracking's great. I want to I wanna have a literal, tangible, tracking's great, and this is what I can do with it. Okay, cool. So uh, actually, it's, it's really cool because my experience with it will show exactly how the more granular in tracking you get, the more yeah. predictable and exponential the results are. So uh, before working with Ruben, I was tracking some things, but not like... You know what? I'm not even going to call it tracking. It was so abysmal. Uh, I'm not even going to call it that. So I definitely wasn't tracking lead gen. And so working with Ruben and the CCI team, that's the first thing we, we nailed down was tracking lead gen, tracking conversations. Okay, great. So yeah. when I started that, I was going from uh, when I transitioned full time in my online uh, fitness business, I was putting all my energy in. Like you mentioned earlier, I had good months, not so good months. Now, yeah. fortunately, the not so good months were starting to become a lot more regular than the good ones, which is why yeah. I reached out. And so I was going from maybe 2K to 4K on these bad months, right? Again, once in a while of maybe seven or eight, but yeah. far and few in between. And so I was consistently 2K, 4K. So then boom, I jump on with you and the CCI team. And then we start tracking lead gen and immediately I'm up to basically 10K, 10K yeah. a month. 11k a month back down to 10 and then i had gone on vacation i lost some momentum and i think it went down to eight or nine so it was like okay my bad month now was like better than my good month <laughs> yeah and then uh as you know and we're super pumped about this and mm -hmm. lately uh as of the last month i really nailed my tracking down like i track every like i mentioned before every single yeah. part every conversation and now predictably I'm booking like my calendar's completely full. It's and it crazy. Actually, yeah, it's insane. I was showing you, I sent you a picture uh, not too long ago. And so it's, uh, it's been more full now in this week and in, in these last two weeks than it has been even in those prior months where I was closing a pretty good amount. And so, you know, being that that's the case and before it was like, yeah, I kind of crossing my fingers. Hopefully I'll get to 20 K a month. Right. Now it's like, Oh no, like, 20K a month is now about to happen. It's just keep following those numbers. It's predictable. And so yeah. I got, went from essentially two to 4K months, kind of fluctuating for, uh, for a little while there, up to at least 10K per month, now aiming for the 20 and maybe the elusive 30. In <laughs> well, we'll get there. We'll get there for sure. No, and I, I, I truly like this. This is, this is where it's at because like I know, like we when we started to track kind of the basics of lead gen, which yes. most people just don't even know, it, it already doubled your monthly income, and yep. now we're going even more in depth. And this is something I mean, I, I talk about it all the time, where basically every new level in business has its own devil, and you need to become a certain person to fight that and to overcome it. And I think you're at the place where you now understood the basics, and you now actually needed to become more detail oriented you need to become better at your numbers and as soon as you did we're starting to see i mean you have calls out of the wazoo right now like you like i like i i know you'll probably have 10 plus sales calls per week right now which is crazy actually because again we're we're actually and for people listening to this or watching this we're not spending really like any money on paid ads to like we're doing you're doing a little bit to grow your audience, but that's yeah. actually not really related to the, the lead gen that we're doing as much. Yeah. And so it's crazy that you can have this consistently because that's another myth that I've heard. A lot of people are like, oh, you can't be consistent with organic social media. And it's like, no, anything is consistent as long as you do it consistent. It's a universal principle. Uh -huh. So anyways, I think for the people listening to this, make sure you are starting to track at least some things. 
Like I think the basic things that uh, we often talk about as far as like just what to start to track is um, number one, track how many new people come into your audience every single week. That's a really important one. The second one that we often tell people to track is how many times per week do you actually offer to get on a sales call with somebody? Yes. Literally, I mean, a lot of people don't have because they don't ask. Like, it's very, very simple. Like I was talking to someone today and they're like, hey, I need more sales calls per week. And I asked them, how many times do you offer sales calls per week? And they're like, well, I really haven't been doing that. And it's like, okay, make that number 10 every single week. And even if the person isn't the most highly qualified lead or the most warmed up, you'll still get some people on calls because you're just asking. So right. those, those two kind of metrics of new people in the audience and offered calls are some of the most basic ones. I mean, there's, there's, there's then obviously numbers like tracking your close percentage on sales calls. If it's a really low percentage, work on your sales. But right. some of those basics, right? Um, so anyways, that's been really helpful for you. Now, I'm kind of curious. Um, and this one, actually, I don't know the answer to. Has it been anything besides tracking that has been really helpful for you? Uh, just in the last couple of months of like helping you understand things better. Like besides tracking, tracking is great. Like it's, I think it's an essential people should just track, sure. but what else would you say has been really helpful? I would say uh, really on top of the tracking, tracking is great, but then you want to make sure you're efficient and effective with your time. And so sort of systemizing mm -hmm. things. Um, I'm sure a lot of people watching that or listening that know about business, understand that systems are very important, but the thing is, is I would always try to systemize things without tracking. And so right. <laughs> it made no sense. It made no sense. Right. I was like, okay, I, I got to get this business down. I got to systemize this. I got to, and it's just like, I, I didn't have direction. So by tracking, right. now I understand, okay, I need to hit these targets. And so by doing that, I need to send out X amount of messages. How can I systemize this or uh, make it so that it's, um, I really can't think of another word. Systemize is really the best word for it. Uh, a right. way that goes streamlined, if you will, to where I can streamline this process so that I can get those messages out efficiently, effectively, and hit yeah. those targets in less time. Obviously, still keeping the quality sort of yes. and that type of stuff, but the systemization is key. But again, I think that systemizing would have to come uh, after, tra like, after you understand what metrics and how to actually track exactly. Yeah, that's, that's, that's exactly it because yeah, you can be tracking stuff, but if you don't have a system to hit the numbers, cause a system allows you to hit numbers in business. Right. So an audience growth system gives you activity that allows you to grow your audience by X amount. Right. A lead gen system allows you to take new audience members and turn them into a lead and hit a certain amount, right? right? So you have to have all these systems and you need to know what they are. A lot of people, they don't, they don't have the flow, right? Or the sequence, right? Mm -hmm. Where they're like, I post content here. Sometimes I do stuff in a Facebook group. Sometimes I do Instagram stories and I do call to actions, but they don't have any flow. Like it's, it's kind of like, like a funnel is a funnel where it's like we push people in the top and there's a flow from cold traffic to paid clients. But a lot of people don't have that flow. So you want the flow, the metrics, and the systems to hit them. Once yeah. you have that, it's just rinse and repeat. Like, you know, like if you do consistently, if you do more and you do more detailed, things get crazy. Yeah. So, and, and actually, I'll actually forward. get a little bit more granular just for, like, give an example for those who are listening or watching. Um, so an example of a system to where, like, it makes it more efficient is for, and you mentioned, like, having like a step one, step two, step three. So for example, okay, I'm going to go through my DMs. I'm going to start my lead gen. Step one is I'm going to respond to every uh, inbox that is yeah. not read. So I'll switch the filter to unread. Boom. I nail all of those while tracking every conversation, see where it's coming, see where it's going. And then, okay, great. Once I've finished that and I've done that, my second step is to send all of my value outreach messages. And then my mm. third step is to follow up with everybody. And then within that system, you've got like the micro or sort of like, you know, you, you figured out what responses most of the time will work well to where you can almost copy paste a little bit of customization. You can sort of dish out yeah. these messages that are very effective. Again, making it very easy to hit these targets. Yeah. Oh, I love that. And that's, that's, that's perfect. Cause every system, I, the way I define it is every system has processes in it. So yeah. like a little, 
a system is made up of processes. That's how I think about it. Like every step in a system is a process that you like you tick off and that's a system. So that, that's, that's, that's awesome. Having basically it's, we call them SOPs for people who don't yes. know what that means. It's, it's a standard operating procedure. Basically like you could even create a document for it where it's like, okay, to do this, it's like literally these actions, these processes, and that's a system. Um, and and so we're getting very, we're getting very detailed here. <laughs> yeah. One more thing to add on top of that is uh, I'll set a timer too. So you can kind of, <laughs> I love how that. Long it's going to take, I go on Google. The first step for me is actually go Google timer, set it and then go. Yeah. You know? Oh, I love that. So you're, so yeah. And that's, and that's where you're getting efficient and you're tracking your time with it right. because that's, that's really important. I mean, time is something that a lot of entrepreneurs struggle with. Like how much time do I put in? How much time should things take? Like what's the ROI per time? So like, I think that that's, that's actually, that's a really good tool actually setting a timer and seeing how you're doing it. So I know, that's, that's interesting. Yeah. It gives you a window where you're like, Oh, I got it. Like you're not going to waste any time. Cause you're like, I got to make it within these 90 minutes, for example. So yeah. you're just cranking it out. <laughs> I love that. I love that. And that actually, it's really, I think it's good to do that. Cause I, I like to call them power hours where like, right. I try to get my like really like quote unquote hustle work done. And I just like, I go at it hard for like an hour and then I'm done that work for the day. Right. And so that's perfect. And for people who are listening to this, if you want some more in-depth um, episodes on systems specifically, I actually did, I think it was like a six to eight part series on different systems further down in the podcast. And so if you want to go check those out, I think I talked about the loop method and I talked about client acquisition systems. I talked about like the audience growth, the nurturing, the lead gen, the sales. So we talked through all of them um, further down in the podcast. So if you want to check out more of that, um, definitely do that. So, okay. So basically we got, okay, guys, we got a track. We, we got to have systems. And um, I mean, those are, those are a couple of things. Here's a funny thing. Most, most business coaches don't talk about that. Most, because, because, and you know this, and the people who are listening to this know that most business coaches, what they talk about is what kind of content should you create? What kind of hashtag should you use? What kind of, like, what's, what should be your sales script? And basically like how to message people to set up sales calls. That's very, very kind of basic business coaching, like curriculum per se. Maybe, maybe a little bit of like how to, how to grow your audience. Um, which is funny because they're teaching you what we would call tactics. They're not teaching you a flow to anything. They're just saying, do like these four different things in the day and you'll get clients. Right. Um, I'm actually curious, John, did you experience this or, or am I just talking about my own experience? No, no, no. This, the, I'm very much familiar with this, uh, with this experience. Um, I, I actually had coaches telling me that I didn't need to track, uh, if you can believe oh. that. If you what can. you've never told oh i mean they have fired up yeah keep going. <laughs> <laughs> i saved it for the podcast so i know you can oh, shoot. go off on another rant here um but but hey you know what man it's the same uh, like i'm about to lose my my mind right now just thinking about the fact that the same thing is in fitness there's people being like don't track don't ever do this and it's just like but why like it's you know it's so so i have been told I've even been told not to track, not to worry about it. And I usually the focus I've had from other coaches was all on exactly what you said, tactics, marketing, how to make all this noise here. And I was like, oh, great. And then I started getting some, some clients in, and then I was just like, wait a second. Uh, how do I sustain them? How do I retain them? How do I deliver this? Like I, I didn't have anything set up and they were just like, don't worry, don't worry. Just get more clients, get more clients, put more content, put more of this. And, you know, it was just, it yeah. really turned into a huge mess with no foundation. Busy work. Yeah. That's busy work. And that's, that, that's the crazy thing where like a lot of people come to me and they're doing like a million and one things to get a couple of clients. And, um, and I talked about this, I think on, no, it wasn't a podcast, but basically like, you know, I created a new Instagram profile, right? Yeah. And it's like less than a thousand followers. And the crazy thing is people like those, like people who would be like, you need to just produce thoughts of content. They would kill me for this. But like who makes tens of thousands of dollars off of this tiny Instagram account every single week. And yeah, I post five days a week and I do stories probably every day, but guess what? None of the clients come from that. Right. Like people, the, the whole, the whole content is king. Content is king 
at, at a certain level. I think for businesses that get to multiple six figure, close to seven figure, at that point, there is there is an importance for broadcasting to the nations, as it were. I'm actually, I'm getting to the spot myself where we're going to start to do a ton more. But I mean, we're only doing it now at, at a seven-figure business. We're not, we haven't done this before that. And so I think, I mean, a lot of, basically, this is what I think. A lot of business coaches are teaching their chapter 20s to people chapter one. Sure. There's a massive mistake because they forget what it is to be at that stage and they think, oh, all these fancy marketing tactics that I have right now should be what you should do at the beginning. And I think it's a bit of a fallacy with that. And, you know, just to touch on the content thing, uh, I couldn't agree more now because before you and I were working together for a bit at the beginning until I realized that I need to, I was posting on Instagram twice a day minimum. Yeah. Uh, like, like as high quality, I was spending so the majority of my time on content creation. Now I'll post yeah. like once a day, maybe five times a week, but I'm not really worried about it. When I post something, I'm really just focused on, is this going to provide the most value? Great. Before it was just like, uh, you know what? I almost don't even care. I need to post twice a minimum <laughs> of this, that right now. See, that's, oh, see yeah. that's, that's where like you and I, you and I track what happens off of your content. And yeah. we understand that it is, it helps our metrics. We see that it helps our metrics, like literally pull it up. We can see it, but it actually is not the majority of what actually boosts your metrics. Right. And it's just, it's so mind blowing to me that people teach you to do stuff that doesn't necessarily directly help you build your business. It indirectly helps, but not directly. And so it's just, it blows my mind. I add no tracking to that. And it's a mess. <laughs> Yeah. Post seven times a day, track nothing, <laughs> and you'll have so many clients. Oh, shoot. Hopefully. Anyways, yeah. No, this, I mean, I was telling you right before we actually pushed record here that one of the other, the other clients that's working with my team, uh, she, she was the same. And she's an Instagram influencer, has like 50,000 followers. And um, like she was booking maybe two calls per week before working with me. And this week, uh, she's a month into working with us. And now she booked 15 calls in a week because we stopped focusing on all the things she was being taught to do as an influencer. And we started telling her to do the things that book calls. I, this, is, this is the way I'll describe it. Whatever metric you follow, you end up to that destination. You follow vanity metrics, you end up at a vanity destination. You follow business metrics, you end up at a business destination. If you, if you want to track likes, comments, and followers, you focus on those metrics, you'll have a lot of followers and a little bit of money. If you focus on sales calls as your one metric that you need to hit a high amount per week, you have a business. And so it's like whatever metric you follow and you go after, you will achieve that result. But is it the result that you want? Wow, that's, that's you know, it's so funny you say that because like that is so, everybody's is backwards. Everybody thinks of it differently. It's like more followers, more money, right? Not oh my gosh. Table. Well, then, then, then I should be making a lot less money than I am. Yeah. So I should be anyways. making more than you. <laughs> yeah, you should be. You have more followers than me. There you go. See, see, oh shoot. No, this has been great. I hope you guys that are listening or watching this are finding this valuable. Um, because this, I mean, like I said, I wanted to get as granular as we possibly could today. We did. We got very, very granular. So I got, I got two quick questions. Uh, questions I want to ask you before we jump off for today. So number one, I want, if people, if people are interested in, in seeing your stuff and following you, uh, where, where, where's the best place to do that? Cause I'm sure some of them want to follow you and see what, what, what you do in business and how you facilitate everything. Cause I think a lot of people want to look up to people who are at the stage where they want to get up to. Right. And so for someone, what, what's the best place to find you um, and to kind of see what you're doing in business and fitness, et cetera. Uh, Instagram is definitely the best spot right now. So the Instagram handle is just John Mango. That's J O N M A N G O. Um, and that's it. So okay. you know, anybody can send me a message on there too. And I'd be happy to uh, help out respond and, you know, give them any tips. Yeah. Like and so on. Totally. Totally. And I, I think a lot of people just like to see when they know someone's like doing what they want to do, they just like to see what is it? What does it look like? They, 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 they want to know what it kind of looks like in a sense. So um, go follow John. He does, he does great stuff on Instagram. Um, 
he he got you got me really bad on April Fool's Day, just so you know. The other day on April Fool's Day, I couldn't believe it. I was watching John's stories, and this is totally tangent here. But he was like, he was describing how he's moving away from fitness coaching. He's not going to do it anymore. And he had like, I was like, what the heck? We had a call just like two days ago. And you're like completely, you're completely abandoning this. And then he was like April Fool's. And I, he got me so good. Oh I was like mad. I was mad. Anyways. I'm still anyways. waiting for my acting award on that one, apparently. <laughs> you, you did great. I was like, wow, get this guy a movie. So <laughs> anyway, so the last question I have, it's always related to um, basically how to become a creator of your life. And I know you did it with fitness. I know you've done it in business. But if you had to put it down to one thing, what's the one thing that it's a hack, tip, whatever it is, tool, helped you create a certain result um, when you didn't have it prior? I would just say uh, it kind of goes back to the two things I mentioned earlier. And the first is understanding why you want to do what it is you're yeah. trying to do, whether it's build the business, again, start a family, and it can relate to anything, so build a good body. The first thing is understanding why. And I don't mean just on the surface. I mean, get as deep as possible. You got to ask yourself the tough questions, the questions that are going to dig deep into, you know, wh what you really want out of life. And then the second part is the commitment if you're gonna give anything less than your fullest then yeah. those are the results you can expect less than what you'll be happy with and so i think those two things it, I like it. it's quite the loaded question as you know but you know i think yes. that, i think those, those two great help. answers great answers having a big reason behind it i mean yeah if you don't have a reason for something it's i mean it's, it's hard to keep up with being motivated or inspired to do it so the big reason and then being fully committed, like 100%. So, no, I love that. I 100% agree with that. So, anyways, guys, thanks for listening today. John, thank you for being on. Uh, make sure you check out his Instagram. And, uh, yeah, we'll be updating you when he gets to the 20 and 30K months. You guys will see it out there. Um, it's going to be happening. Like, I, we, can, we can both feel it. So, anyways, guys, thanks for being on. And we'll be check, uh, basically probably catching you guys next week with another episode on YouTube and on the creator show on um, the podcast. So bye for now, guys. Have an amazing rest of your day.